Hello primary 6 students, how are you? Welcome in your science class with me, Dr. Shema Hamdi Qasim, and your channel, the Big Sister channel. As now, we will study lesson 2 from concept 2, unit 1. We have here activity 4, building living systems. So, uh, guess with me, the system that we are going to build it. It's a system in the human body. As you see here, we will build up the muscular system. Okay. So let's start. We know that the cells are the building blocks of all living organisms as human, animal, plants. We also know that the human body is multicellular organism as it consists of millions or trillions of cells. As you see here, cells are the building blocks of the human body and thousands of cells make tissue and the group of tissues consists the organs and many organs consist system. And finally, many systems consist the human body and the human body made up of many systems we have the digestive system respiratory system circulatory system nervous system and muscular system as we will build now the muscular system and each system performs specific function and all systems work together so the human can do all the life activities okay also we know that the human cells have different sizes and different shapes they aren't similar okay as we see here we know the nerve cells has shape and size different from the blood cells and we have here the muscle cells why they have different shapes and different sizes because cells must be specialized to perform specific function okay this is the reason so if we wanted to build up the muscular system so which type of cells that we will pick up from this group do we choose nerve cells or blood cells or muscle cells yes we will pick up the muscle cells to build up the muscular system because these cells are specialized and can perform the function of the muscular system okay this is one reason and we have another reasons as the muscle cell is in the form of long fibers long fibers and these form the long fibers allow movement okay so this is a characteristic of the muscle cell that is in form of long fibers it can store and use the energy quickly it can store and use energy quickly and as they can't work alone the muscle cells so they are bundled together to form tissues okay why the muscle cells can't work alone because the size of it is very small so it can't work alone these are the characteristics that must be in the muscle cells to perform their function okay so here we are building the muscular system we have muscle cells may um, the number reached to thousands of muscle cells that consists the muscle tissue and many tissues muscle tissues consist the organ okay the muscle and we have an example like the muscle in the front part of the upper arm you know the upper arm the part between the shoulder and the elbow okay this part called the upper are and there are two muscles muscles in the front part of the upper arm and muscle in the back 
okay, uh, of the upper arm. And we have newt here. Thousands of muscle cells work together to be effective. So this is why the muscle cells can't work alone. And many organs, muscles as the muscle in the front of the upper arm. So many muscles form the muscular system. So congratulations, well done, as we build up the muscular system by using the muscle cells. Here we have two systems. We have on the left muscular system and we know it is built up with the muscles or the muscle cells and we have in the right the skeletal system look to the picture it is made by the bones the bones in our body consist the skeletal system okay so here if i told you musculoskeletal system musculoskeletal system so what is the system think for a few seconds yes it has uh, two words muscular and skeletal system so it is a combination between the two systems so we can say that musculoskeletal system is consists of muscles and bones as they are attached to each other and the muscles attached to the bones okay and it attached by another organs so it consists of muscles bones and another organs as you see here this is the musculoskeletal system it is consists of bones muscles th three organs as tendons ligaments cartilages and each of these five organs in the musculoskeletal system has specific rule to allow the musculoskeletal system to do its function and the function of the system the movement of the body as we move by these system okay as the muscles as we will see contract and relax so they can move the pounds okay so we can walk we can run we, we can raise our hands and any movement that we do is by this system the musculoskeletal system okay as we have here organs of the musculoskeletal system bones muscles and here we have the tendons these lighted part is the tendons okay and it's found in the legs and in the arms okay here another organ which is cartilage 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 as you see here this is the knee cartilage and also we have ligaments 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 and as you saw, those, the tendons, the cartilages, and the ligaments, organs in the musculoskeletal system with the bones and the muscles. We can say that the musculoskeletal system and the other different systems form the whole body. As each system performs specific function and the old systems work together, to help the human to do different activities. Okay, as you see here, these boys are playing football. So, uh, to do this activity, it requires interaction between many systems. Okay, as uh, the respiratory system, as these players inhale more oxygen gas, and circulatory system, as the heart speeds increase, nervous system, that has the brain, one organ in the nervous system that control all the body. And we have the musculoskeletal system that allow movement and allow the player to run fast. And also we have excretory system. 
as producing sweet is one function of the excretory system. Okay, so to do any activity in our life that need integration between the systems in our body as we saw. Now we will study activity five, moving muscles. We know that skeletal and muscular systems work together to allow movement of the arm to shoulder. As we see here, this man lifting weights, okay? And if we look to uh, his arm, we will see that the four arm moves, okay? As the muscles allow the prunes to move, even uh, toward the shoulder or moving away from the shoulder, okay? As you see here, this is the man's arm. You know, this is shoulder and this is the upper arm. Okay, and we have the elbow and then forearm. So the last part between the elbow and the hand called forearm. Okay, so let's uh, see the man again while he is moving his hand toward uh, his shoulder and away from his shoulder. What happens that make this movement as the muscles contract and relax? And if we see here, the front muscle that found in the upper arm, it contracts, so it moves the forearm toward the shoulder. And when the muscle relax, it moves the forearm away from the shoulder, as we saw. So the skeletal muscles are attached to the bones in uh, the fingers, arms, legs, the muscles are attached to the pons and this to make the pons move, okay? Also, the muscle contraction moves the pons in one direction, as we saw. So the muscle contraction moves the pons in one direction, as when the muscle contract, so if we talk about the upper arm, when this muscle contracts, so it will move the forearm toward the shoulder in one direction, okay? And also, muscles exert force only when it contracts. As muscles do force, this is required force when it contracts, okay? As contracts means to in decrease in size, okay? Now we will see what happens that make your forearm moves upward and your forearm moves down away. Okay, as you see here, this is the upper arm, as we said, and here we have two muscles, the front muscles and the pack muscle. And this is the forearm between the elbow and the hand. And when the front muscle contracts or relax, the forearm moves even upward or down away, okay? So here uh, we have two cases as when the forearm moves upward toward the shoulder, when the muscle in the front of the upper arm contracts, so the muscle contracts, so the forearm moves upward toward the shoulder, okay? And what happens to the muscle in the back of the upper arm? It relaxes, okay? So here, the two muscles are doing the opposite. When the front muscles in the upper arm contracts, so the muscle in the back of the upper arm relaxes and the forearm moves upward toward the shoulder. Now, if you understand these, so can you tell me what happens when the forearm moves downward away from the shoulder? Yes, here the muscle in the front of the upper arm relaxes. Okay, the opposite, relaxes. And the muscle in the back of the upper arm contracts, so the forearm moves downward away from the shoulder. Okay? I hope this point is clear for you. 
So now we finished our lesson. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my channel. Thank you for watching. See you next video, inshallah, and goodbye.